quite what I wanted to do as we head through Aqua Minerali. Still a little bit all over the place. A massive thank you to KG Sonic, Joey BIR, Moises, Yamaha and Christopher for subscribing to the channel. If you want to be featured in these clips, make sure you subscribe down below. Hello everyone and welcome back guys to a brand new video. It's Stevie here back with round two of season four of the F1 2021 My Team Career Mode. Yes, of course, over the weekend we went back to Sakia for the first race of the new championship but today we head into unknown territories Imola and Portimao the next two tracks up on the calendar I am really really excited to be jumping into these two over the course of the next couple of race weekends but of course if you missed out on that race from Bahrain I definitely definitely recommend going back and checking out obviously it'll be linked if you click the eye at the top right hand side of your screens as a while there of course there will be spoilers in just a second but some big big news as we head into this weekend some big upgrades coming in from both mercedes and ourselves they can see we've still got two major dr uh, sorry aerodynamic upgrades in the works at the moment so it has pushed us back up into p3 overall they can see what sort of performance everyone lost at the end of last season as well. They can see Williams, Alfa Romeo and Haas losing absolutely nothing at all. But everyone else here yeah, with some big, big drop-offs at the end of the year there. But yeah, heading though into this weekend. Currently sat P5 in the Drivers' Championship. P3 in the Constructors there. Red Bull though are looking formidable at the start of the campaign. But maybe this weekend Mercedes have brought some upgrades. We'll have to wait and see about that. Let's head in then for our very first proper race here at Imola. Right, well, here we are then, ready back for our first laps here of Imola. Of course, we did that last a question mark video a couple of days back when the track did launch on F1 2021. That was rather fun racing as Carlos Sainz, but I'm sure, yeah, this thing is going to be a very, very different experience around the circuit. Just want to sort of ease into it over these first few laps, but yeah, we're definitely going to have to do a lot of practice for this one, so we're prepared, ready for race day. Going to be interesting to see as well just how quickly AI are over one lap pace as well but fingers crossed we can keep it clean and tidy not the best run up the hill but so far we haven't missed any of the track alignization lap boards as well and rounding through the front a couple of corners of the lap so far so good zone is coming up get ready to open it Distance Get the last few everything. points as we head up towards the line there. It's going to be 550. We just miss out on purple. Each turn. Well, normally I'd give up after the first lap, but I think this weekend we just want to get the extra mileage in, and that is the perfect score. Like I said, definitely need as many laps worth of practice as we can get here, so getting some more R&D is always an added bonus. Hoping we can cheese away the purple lap on the first run. On the fuel saving program, let's just wait and see. Uh, there we go, yep. Our first lap of the race simulation run has gone pretty well. Then we're going to be nearly a second up there. Love to see that. Let's try and aim for purple. Right, we're coming to the towards the end then of our final race sim run lap. This has been pretty good and pretty reassuring. Ready for the weekend. Feel like I'm starting to learn the limitations of the car. And again, it's going to be almost a second up. A perfect now, practice. What we asked for. Keep it up. 600 out 600 R&D points earned. Yeah, absolutely love to see it. Let's get into qualifying. Here we are then, on rather a murky qualifying day here at Imola. Let's see what we can do with our first run in Q1. Like I said, don't really want any dramatics anymore. We want to be trying to avoid featuring as much Q1 footage as possible. Because really, yeah, we want to be focusing on Q2. And maybe just this weekend we can get the car into Q3 as well. No idea what strategy is going to look like around here, but we'll wait and see. That's not a curve through turn one though, got away with it. But the back end might try and rotate, but obviously chassis upgrades that we've brought this weekend. I've made the car a lot more stable. Feel like I can lean on it a lot more, which I'm guessing was the advantage Merck and Red Bull had last weekend. That's not the best line through Tosa, however, but we recover it on the exit. Through the final corner to finish off our first run has been pretty decent, if I do say so myself. We go third ahead of Callum Eilat. That surely is good enough for Q2 there, but 1.4 off Hamilton. There's definitely at least another half a second there, but Mercedes looking fast. 
And there we go, getting out of Q1 with just the one run there, so rather happy with that one. Hamilton ahead of Perez and Verstappen, so already the Red Bull dominance we saw last weekend might already be coming to a halt here. But we did only just sneak through into Q2 there. Lance Stroll this time around out as well as your usual five. Uh, yeah, one of the Aston Martins out in Q1 both weekends so far. Not quite what they wanted. We definitely, though, have got the pace for Q3. Right, first run in Q2. Then we're going to go out on the mediums just to try and get our eye in a little bit here. Definitely going to have to lean on the rubber, though, a lot. But hopefully we can run sort of close to what we did in Q1 on those soft tyres. There, like I said, there were definitely a few mistakes. Definitely feel like Q3 should be the aim this weekend. But we've got to try and get a good lap hooked up. Really open up the track width as best as possible. And again, you've got to do that by attacking the kerbs. Ragged through the first couple of turns, but that was all right. Down in towards the second weird little chicane. Really got to sort of just chuck the car in and hope it grips up there. Let's not do this what we did last time around through Tosa. That's a whole lot better. Roll on the power on the exit. That was really nice on the exit of the corner as we've already got Sergio Perez waiting right behind us. Ocon a 13-9 as that is not the line at the top of the hill. That took the iRacing line through there quite what I wanted to do as we head through Aqua Minerali. Still a little bit all over the place. Oh, and rubbing up against the wall there. That was lucky not to lose a wheel, but that is definitely going to be our medium run. Over before it's really begun. Right, let's try and go out then for a bit of a better lap and actually put a lap time on the board this time round on the set of the soft compound tyres once more. Yeah, a little bit just overstepping the mark slightly there, but you don't work out the limits in Formula 1 without trying to overstep them every once in a while. Let's see what we can do on this second run. Again, just breaking up a little bit later through to a moment. Again, the back end getting really unsettled there as you try and take a lot of the curving on the inside. I'm trying to be brave, but yeah, again, we need to actually put a lap time on the board this time around. That is, of course, top priority. is already a tenth down on Bottas as we head out of Sector 1. Again, another pretty decent run at a toaster there. Obviously very, very difficult to try and get it hooked up without any traction control. So that time around we actually stick towards track limits down the hill in towards Aqua Minerali. Again, just not quite getting it through the second part of the apex there, but we hold on to it this time round. No dramatics from the back end. Can really attack the kerbs through the chicane. That was pretty nice. That was really nice actually on the exit there as we head now down. Intervals fun, a couple of corners of the lap, a lap here at Imola. You've got to be really, really on it. Take a lot of curb on the way in. Really try and open up because it opens up the second part of the corner as well. Oh, a little bit of a snap there from the back end as we head up towards the line. It's only going to be a 13 6 15. That last lap moves you onto the eighth row of the grid. We need a really good final run here in Q1, uh, in Q2 even. I really need to start seeing Q3. Right, one more chance then here in Q2. At Imola, there's definitely a lot of time to find on that second run, but I think sweat mode is definitely going to need to be engaged this time round. If we want to try and find the pace, we need about another eight tenths of a second. We definitely need to be down into the 12s. Like I said, there is definitely a lot of time to be found as well. Well, that was a lot better. A lot of curve, though, again. Through turn one and turn two. That's what we need to be doing, though, getting the lines right. I feel like I've never quite taken enough speed off a Tosa on the way in, and it's compromising our exit, but that time around was a lot better than the first one. Got the curve through the entry, but we get a nice run on the exit as well there and this lap has been pretty good so far if i do say so myself let's not do any stupid mistakes through the final couple of turns at the final corner we're going to be near enough a second up there what a lap this has been at the end of q2 and it's 10th we sneak through oh that feels good that was pretty much everything i could get out of the car on that lap and that was a lap of imola that i could be pretty proud of there we was actually p9 at the end of the session, so Carlos signs out in Q2 of this Emilia, well, Emilia Romagna Grand Prix there. Hamilton, though, ahead of Yuki Sonoda. So, yeah, Mercedes, just like Red Bull last weekend, looking rather ominous here. Daniel Ricciardo seems to have found a bit more pace as well, though, but it is Eilat as well making it through, as well as Gasly 
and Charles Leclerc there. But yeah, if we can get anything higher than 10th, I think it's going to be quite a miracle because that lap was basically everything I've got in this thing. Laps here at him and are just absolute chef's kiss. But let's wait and see if we can try and get this last one hooked up. Currently P10 on the grid. I think if we got it perfect, we could see ourselves up to about P5 here. Gasly really does seem to have got a final run out in his back pocket there. But up towards the line. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to concentrate on this one. See if we can get it all hooked up once again. Well, so far, the slaps felt pretty hooked up. But what are we going to be able to do? As we head down in towards the final couple of corners of the lap. Really trying to open up. Oh, final corner was not great. Up towards the line, though. What is the time going to be? Watch the clock slowly tick by. It's a 12-7. And is that any higher than 10th? I'm not convinced it is. Well, there we are, then. Verstappen with the pole position at the end there. Second one in a row. Somehow bringing out an 11-5 at the end of qualifying there. But, yeah, like I thought, it is only P10 on the grid here at Imola, but like I always say, race pace in this thing mighty strong there. Alpha Tauri 2 and 2 Motorsport, McLaren and Ferrari all looking very, very similar paced at the moment. Let's dive in then for our very first My Team race here at Imola. Hello there and welcome back to Imola, home circuit of the Scuderia Ferrari. We expect to see a lot of local supporters in red today. They've all turned out for what we have every expectation of being a sensational event here at the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. 3.1 miles of track here at Imola featuring 19 turns, 9 to the right and 10 to the left. Remember that Imola differs from most other Formula 1 circuits as it's driven anti-clockwise. Let's hope no one forgets that today. The exit from turn 18 will probably be the setup for many of today's overtakes, leading as it does into the longest straight of the circuit and its only DRS zone. Alongside me once again for coverage of today's race, it's none other than the great Anthony Davidson. Let's have a chat about McLaren. We have a number of changes to the aerodynamic regulations this year and the signs haven't looked good for them so far in terms of getting to grips with those changes. There are a few downcast looks within the team this weekend. I think they've been hit fairly hard by the new regs, but this is only the first step down a long road of development. And even if they don't maximise their points today, there are plenty more up for grabs this season. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Young superstar Max Verstappen starts from pole position and Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Sonoda, Perez, Pierre Gasly and Button, Ricardo, Eilert, Leclerc and Mr. Monaco, Sainz, Joe, Valtteri Bottas and Russell. Latifi, Ocon, Nikita Mazepin, and Antonio Giovinazzi, Stroll, Lundgaard, Mick Schumacher, and Robert Schwartzman. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head to trackside for today's race. After the points finish last race, let's aim to keep the momentum going. I think that is absolutely going to be key over the course of this year. You need as much momentum as possible as we head through this calendar. In terms of strategy, though, like I said, I really have got no idea what the game plan is going to be today. I'm thinking soft mediums might be doable, but I really don't know. I'm not trying to get into, like, lap 14 and then do mediums to the end, but who really knows uh, what is going to happen today. It's a step into the unknown here at Imola, but sometimes that's what racing is all about. Of course, a long run down in towards the first corner. We need a good clean start here as well. We've got JB just a couple of rows in front of us. The McLarens as well as the Clur right there. Five red lights. And it is going to be lights out and away we go. Getting off to a pretty even start there with Charles Leclerc as we head down towards Tel But Sykes already has had a pretty good one there. As everyone fans out in towards the first corner. Was worried Sykes was going to squeeze me out but leaves me the room. As contact between the two McLarens there. I accidentally bobble over the curbs and completely slam the door on Carlos Sykes out through turn one and turn two. But we have held on to the position there, but it seems like has, yeah, he's held on to P6 there. Ricardo has lost the place to Calamilo here as we head through Tosa for the first time, but as we power up the hill on this first lap there, looks like Hamilton has pulled off a move on Max Verstappen as well, so a critical move at the start of the race. There is Sainz again 
trying to look for a move into what's rather a small breaking zone there. Bottas moving up the order as well into 12th place off the start. I need to be really careful as we head through the exit of Aqua Minerati. That's where we're having the most issues over the course of this lap. Everyone Constantine is up a bit through the chicane. We just about hold on to it through there as well. As we come down towards the end of the opening lap, though, Pierre Gasly has actually... Yeah, look at that. He's jumped Sergio Perez off the start here as well. So what are Red Bull and Alpha Tauri going to do about that? As Ricardo, small mistake out the final corner. Hamilton leads, though, at the end of lap one here at Imola. We've got to try and get a run on Charles Leclerc as we head back down towards Turn 1. And are we gaining enough on the Ferrari? We're going to use a lot of battery, but I don't think we're quite going to be close enough this time round. Definitely, though, down towards Helm 1 is going to be the only big opportunity to make moves today. Charles Leclerc not getting a particularly good run out of the chicane, though, as we head down the hill in towards find a couple of corners of the lap. Are we going to be able to have a look at the inside of Charles? Oh, it's a big old squeeze, but we do get in front. And I'm going to P9 then at the end of lap two. That's exactly what we needed. Team a fan of that one as well. As yeah, Ferrari are definitely going to be a team that just battles for the back of the points. DRS now enabled. Here is Gasly and Perez. You can see sparking away up the road. Right, let's see if anyone can get a run then out of the final corner. As Verstappen now trying to apply more pressure to Lewis Hamilton here. But he's got two Mercedes to contend with. He's actually ahead of Hamilton again there as Button now under pressure from Callum Eilot behind him. Side by side as they head down through turn one and Eilot just about keeps the nose there. All of these guys Constantine are up on the exit there as we almost go into the back of Ricardo on the exit of turn three. Can't quite make a move work through turn four as well there. It looks like one of the Haas cars. Robert Schwartzman out of the Grand Prix there. It looks like they're retiring. Seems like Schwarzman's had an engine failure, so another Ferrari power unit goes up. Adds to the Honda, one we had last time out as Sainz. Uh, sorry, yeah, no, that was Sainz again. Ever the opportunist. I think we've all got to hope Robert Schwarzman's car has been cleared before we get back down towards Turn 1. As again, we get really good drive out of the final corner, but that McLaren just picks up momentum as we head back down towards Turn 1. Their button again. Side by side with Callum Eilat there. And this time around he's pulled off the move. Ricardo trying to have a look up the inside. You can't do that on the yellow flags. As Button gets squeezed out on the exit of the corner there. Surely that's an illegal overtake from Daniel Ricardo here. As now we're going to try and look up the teammate up the inside of our teammate. Button! What is that man? Come on! Button tries to really squeeze us on the exit of the corner there. But surely that's a penalty for Daniel Ricardo. Quite clearly made the overtake under yellow flags. But JB loses three, maybe even four spots. In one go there is now Carlos Sainz applying the pressure. Surely can't be having more mechanical issues. Can our teammate? He's had so much bad luck this year. He does hold on ahead of Sainz. But now we need to try and close up to Ricardo and I lot again. I think it might be very, very difficult to have a look past the McLarens today. Unless, of course, they can get a run on each other. And we can be there to capitalise. And look at that Ricardo again. Getting mighty good traction out of the final corner. He's going to be able to challenge his teammate Callum I lot Back down in towards someone. But look at that squeeze. From Callum Eilot there, just having absolutely none of it from his very, very experienced teammate Daniel Ricciardo. Of course, Eilot had a worldy of a race at Bahrain until a late race mistake forced him right back down the order there. And Ricciardo, I think, knows this weekend he needs to be able to try and prove himself as the number one within that team. Because Eilot, yeah, is looking mighty fast in his rookie season here in Formula 1. And we're only one race in. Really hope we can just continue maintaining this level of pressure on Daniel Ricciardo so he can't feel like he just can sit behind his teammate Callum Eilot in this Grand Prix there and again Ricciardo is he going to have a look to the outside yes he is Eilot this time around has got to give him a bit more room again not really willing to give much though as they head back down through turn one and Eilot does get caught out there Ricciardo oh no Ricciardo having none of that the grip levels to start falling away soon. how on earth we've all come out of that unscathed I'm not really sure there is Ricciardo pulls off a power move on his teammate we're going to have a look around the outside of Eilot down in towards Tosa as well there, it's around the outside we go. Can we get the power on the exit? Yes, we can. It's going to be a drag race up the hill, though, between ourselves and Callum Eilot as we head up in towards the next corner. Around the outside we go, using a little bit of curbing on the exit. It's not done yet. In towards Aqua Minerali. The AI, Callum Eilot. Right, can we now get a run on Callum Eilot as we head back down towards Turn 1 here? In the wheel tracks, to the outside we go. As we head back down in towards the first corner, side by side with the McLaren, who really just was willing to give us nothing then. That's an illegal overtake, is that it? Move was illegal. Return the position. 
No idea how Ricardo got away with his, but I can't do that in the Grand Prix. Ricardo under overtook under yellow flags. We got squeezed out, but we wanted to back out of it. And now Ricardo's just going to run off into the distance. Well, about to stop that 10 here, and so far it's been non stop action here at Imola, but now Ilot is going to have nothing to defend himself with in terms of DRS. Only got his right foot and the battery pack to try and help him as we head back down towards Telmont, but surely this one is going to be a lot more of a textbook move. To the inside we go. We're going to be clean passing before we get under the gantry. And we're now back up into P8, uh, P7 sorry, of the Grand Prix. So that was a bit ragged out of turn one. Got to try and defend. Got to try and defend. Ilot all over us. But we will send it in towards the next corner there and force Ilot to back out of it. P7 now is Ricardo. 2.6 up the road. Gasly, 7 seconds up the road now. We're increasing our gap on the car behind by around a second a lap. Well, so there we go then, end of lap 10, Sainz first man into the pits, uh, this front running group, like I said I want to try and get to about lap 14 and then go mediums to the end, not confident the hards will work well here, but it's going to be a tall order because these rubber definitely feels like it's already going off, there we go, Ricardo into the pits at the end of the next lap here as well, there's actually quite a few of the front runners, Give us the best in lap you can. Snowder and Perez last guys out on the softs as well, but again, we want to try and extend this stint a few more laps, as I lot, of course, behind us, is still going to be applying the pressure. Well, it looks like we are going to get to lead another Grand Prix in this season, as Sonoda and Perez both going on to hard tyres as well. But we've only got to try and get these two more laps, including this one. But yeah, definitely going to be a tall order there, as Button is going to dive it in. Coming in for his stop. Good job we didn't pit then, otherwise we would have had to cost JB a load of time. Yeah, these tyres definitely reach the end of their usable life. There is Guan Yu Zhou on a set of medium, so he's a bit of an unknown in this race as well there. And hopefully he can hold the rest of these guys up for us. Right, well, we have just about survived on this set of tyres there. They're very, very worn out, but not really losing much to Guan Yu Zhou there. Max Verstappen got released and has immediately taken a lot of time out. I mean, been able to break himself out. Actually, quite a nice little gap in this Grand Prix. Where do we pit? About there. That, that seemed about right, it turns out, as we head into the pit lane then for hopefully our one and only stop of the Grand Prix. I'm hoping we can come out still around Callum Eilat in this race and obviously be just that bit quicker right the way through to the end there. As Guan Yu Zhou is actually coming to pit as well. That's not particularly reassuring. Then come on, get in gear. 3.1 anyways. A pretty awful stop in this race there. As there goes Daniel Ricciardo. Are we going to stay ahead of Eilat in this Grand Prix? It is going to be close, I think, as we head back down to towards turn one. Okay, stay clear of the white I think Eilat's going to have us, though. We'll Look at that. Oh, no, Eilat. What's he doing? Track. That was a clear-cut move for the McLaren, but he's not taking it. And we will hold on, then, to P7 in this Grand Prix there. Ricardo five seconds up the road. Gasly, eight. So we've lost a couple of seconds to those guys, but fingers crossed now. If we look after this rubber, we can be consistently quicker. Really working on trying to set some consistent lap times You're to see it through to the end. Than the car ahead. Keep this up. That's what you like to hear, a second faster than Ricardo and Gasly up the road. But again, we've got to try and maintain this level of pace. Try and get past them both. Just noticed as well on the mini-map, Carlos Sainz is actually out on another set of softs here. So I'm not too sure what the Ferrari is doing. Well, he's definitely doing at least a two-stop, but... Surely that's going to make it incredibly difficult for him towards the end of this race. It might be fast, but there's not going to be many opportunities to overtake cars. Gap to car in front is 1.7 seconds. Oh, Christian Lungard out of the Grand Prix out of nowhere. Two Ferrari power units gone up then in this race. And heartbreak for Lungard. And I had a couple of you guys saying, obviously, after we didn't go with Ferrari power for this year and the Honda blew up in JB. Yeah, perhaps, perhaps going Honda wasn't as bad as it could have been. Oh, we've got more yellow flags out. Oh, it's Lewis Hamilton. By the looks of it, falling to the wayside here at Imola. Heartbreak for Hamilton, or has he just binned it? Hamilton side by side then with Yuki... Oh, no, it's Yuki Tsunoda and Max Verstappen coming together through turn one and turn two. And just like we saw in real life, Verstappen not willing to give an inch there. Tsunoda not willing to back out. And he's in the gravel. We're going to have to see Tsunoda dive into the pits at the end of this lap. And could the battle with Ricardo end up then being for P5 rather than P6. I'm still trying to monitor the gap to Gasly, who I think could be a thorn in our side throughout the entirety 
of this championship. But are we going to see Sonoda dive it into the pit lane? Doesn't look like we are. So all of that hypothetical straight out the window. We could still be battling Gasly for P5 again by the end of this one. Ten laps to go here at Imola. And this race has flown by up to now. Like Colin and Daniel Ricciardo, we've slowly closed up to the back of the Australian over the course of this stint after battling out with him early on in the Grand Prix. But this time around, he's going to have no DRS to defend himself with. It's going to be a drag race back down towards window. Turn 1. On the Team, for some reason, believe we're going to pit again in this Grand Prix. But to the outside of the Australian, gives us a big squeeze. Not wanting to back out down in towards Turn 1. There's a little bit of wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact, but having absolutely none of that. And we will now move up into P6. Here at Imola, Ricardo thinks about trying to get a run, but can't do anything about it now. As now we've got to try and close up to Pierre, who has spent pretty much all day in fifth or better, all weekend pretty much in fifth or better. But can we upset the AlphaTauri party? And the lap 24 gap to Gasly down to just two seconds. Here in we need to lap. get one more. Push now. We definitely are doing that, Jeff. But yeah, if we can get inside the DRS, I don't think there's going to be much the AlphaTauri can do. Coming towards the end then of lap 26. That gap now down below the one second to Pierre. Are we going to be close enough this time around to get a run back down towards turn one? Again, just dip a wheel in the gravel on the exit of the final corner there as we try and find as much time as we possibly can. But we're getting a big run on Pierre as we head back down in towards the first corner. We had a brilliant battle last week. Head to the inside of the Alpha Tauri and that was not the cleanest move. I think I've ever done that. Just got a little bit optimistic in towards the corner there. We'll let Pierre have that one back because, yeah, that was definitely a day late and a dollar short there by myself. Just completely snagged the inside wheel. Couldn't get the car slowed down. I wasn't expecting Gasly to force as defensive as much as he was. But, yeah, like I said, we'll give him the place back and we'll go for it again at the end of the lap. As now Ricardo might be seeing that and thinking there's an opportunity here to get back into this battle. Getting another really nice run, though, through the chicane. Look at that roll over the back of Gasly before we even get towards the final corner. To the outside as we head down in towards the final couple of turns. A tiny bit of wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact as Gasly there returning the favour with another big old squeeze. Can we get a run out of the final turn, though? Again, all over the back of Pierre. Keep taking care of them. Team seem happy with the tyres. So just five laps to go, and surely this one, yeah, is going to be a lot more easy to pull off there down the inside into our wards turn one and we'll comfortably pass him before we can get into the braking zone and we're now up into p5 once more here at Imola we finished fifth last weekend after a brilliant battle with Gasly are we about to do the same here today Red Bull and Mercedes though we're still just in another league fastest lap no idea how we've pulled that off but I mean we'll take it it must have been the huge overspeed we got down towards turn one but, I mean, yeah, if we can have a bonus point here, I'll quite happily have that. Thank you very much. Really, yeah, these okay, mediums have hung on rather well. Remaining. Definitely feel like we made the right strategy call. So, yeah, these things have felt wonderful to drive throughout the entirety of this stint. Then again, we have looked after them pretty well. Been very, very regimented on the wheel spin, trying to avoid any sort of oversteer we possibly can. But, yeah, Sonoda 10 seconds up the road, definitely not going to be able to close it to him unless something disastrous happens. Two laps to go here and about to lap Nikita Mazepin in this Grand Prix. Should I really be surprised despite a lot better machinery than a lot of the cars in front of him? Nikita still finds a way to be last in the Grand Prix and last by a good, what, 25 seconds, I think, in this race there. He's not only going to move out of the way back down towards turn one, but we will get past him. And yeah, less than two to go here from Imola. Looks pretty good. All right, well, anyway, about to start the final lap then here at Imola. What a race it has been for a first out and around this track in a career mode series. We started P10 on the grid, had a bit of a ropey first couple of laps, a couple of brilliant battles as well. Final lap, final lap of the race. But wasn't really sure what to do with strategy in this one today, but it looks like it has come out and we have pulled off what was a rather aggressive one stop here. Softs to mediums. They're definitely during the medium stint. We have felt comfortable. And really have learnt a lot about this track as well there. But yeah, like we said though, Mercedes and Red Bull leagues ahead of the rest of the field at this early stage of the campaign. So all we can do is keep finishing best of the rest. And hopefully, therefore, if we can continue piling upgrades on the car, it can give us a bit of a shot in the second half of the World Championship. But it looks like Verstappen is going to make it two from two here. Mercedes though, have definitely been able to bring a lot of performance this weekend. And definitely seem like they're not going to let Red Bull have it all their own way. 
over the course of the year as well. They're through the final couple of corners. Max Verstappen okay, is going to take his second race victory in a row seconds. here and really stake his claim on the championship this year. Lewis Hamilton, though, like we always say, is never going to make it easy. Finishes in P2 there. Perez makes it another double Red Bull podium at the end of the day. There, Sonoda sneaks fast his lap back away from me right at the end there, which I can't lie, I'm a little bit gutted about. But out of the final corner, it's P5 yet again here. Yeah, absolutely love to see that. That's the end of the race. We'll see you in Park Fermi. And that's it then for the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. And what a sensational victory they've managed to pull off here. Tell me, Ant, how do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? I think that smart tyre management on track and very smooth driving definitely assisted in their victory today. That combination meant they got the absolute maximum out of their tyres at all times. Red Bull put up an outstanding fight for the front position today and it's great to see it paid off for them. They do so much for the sport that you can't help but be delighted by today's race win. So let's review the updated driver's standings. Max Verstappen should be pleased with his performance, making gains at the top of the table. Let's focus on the driver of the day, Anthony Davidson. Who do you pick? I have to give it to Mr. Monaco. There was a lot going on all down the field, but they were the only one who I really felt maximised their potential. It's time to see how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship. Red Bull pull further ahead in the standings. Meanwhile, good work from Aston Martin this weekend, who pushed themselves further up the order. It's been an absolutely wild weekend of Formula One action. I can't wait to see what's next. Well, there we are then, guys, the end of the Emilia-Romagna Grand Prix there. Max Verstappen takes home another dub at 1.2 seconds though ahead of Lewis Hamilton. It was definitely a lot closer this weekend there. Sergio Perez third ahead of Yuki Tsunoda with the fastest lap bonus point there. And again, we finished P5. Gasly in at P6 there. Some things, yeah, some things always say the same in the world of Formula 1 there. Ricardo in seventh ahead of Callum Eilat there with Charles Leclerc and Bottas getting a well-earned point for Williams as a while there. JB all the way down in 12th place there. Really did just fall apart for him as the race went on. Further down the order though, Sainz definitely didn't make that two-stop work like we expected there. And you can see the only other two-stopper was Nikita Mazepin and the only man to finish the lap down was Nikita Mazepin there. Lungard and Schwartzman both not making it through to the chequered flag. I mean, championship-wise, Verstappen, 51 points there, 33 for Sergio Perez there. Hamilton jumps Sonoda, 30 versus Sonoda's 28. We're still sat on 20. Pierre Gasly on 16 and Ricardo on 12. There, obviously, after we've both, uh, after all three of us finished 5th, 6th and 7th in the two races, respectively there. Latifi still in 8th place ahead of Callum Eilat and Charles de Clare. They're all tied on 4 apiece with Sainz and Bottas with one as well there. Ocon drops back down. Button, again, his first finish of the year there down in P14, but he does get a lot of people back on count back there. Means constructors-wise, Red Bull 84 points out in front. Mercedes on 58 there. We're just four points ahead of Alfa Tauri and McLaren, though, as Williams still ahead of Ferrari there. And Alpine, Aston, Alfa Romeo and Haas still yet to score. Doesn't look likely that any of those guys will be able to score anytime soon as well there. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, do make sure you leave a like. Get yourself subscribed as well. And yeah, we'll be back very, very soon. We're round three of the year. Another new track. We head to Portimao. This one was good. I'm sure that one will be as well. You guys do not want to miss it. We'll be back very, very soon. None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel supporters. So a massive thank you to the travesty, Patrick, Chuam, David, Ben, Aiden, Estasios, Kato, Sean, Yoni, McBlam, Mighty Spork, Taziaf, and William for becoming channel members. If you want to join them and be featured in all of these videos, you can click the join button down below.